Today we're going to look at how to customize a title block in Autodesk Inventor. And there's several different methods that you can work towards on customization. I've got a drawing sheet up, which is the, the base drawing sheet. And you can see that in the browser we have different components within that drawing sheet. If we edit the drawing sheet, we can change the size. And when we change the size, what will happen is that the border will change. However, the title block does not. And so there's different title blocks that we can install. And we'll also talk about how to edit a title block here uh, in just a few minutes. But as, as we can work, we've also got a folder called Drawing Resources in the browser. And in here, we have different items that we can save. Uh, we can actually save these as part of the drawing resources where if we have a custom title block that we want to use we can put them in uh, the drawing resources folder and they'll be available uh, to you all the time. However, we need to get rid of this giant title block and to do that I'm going to right mouse click under ANSI large and delete it. You'll, you'll notice that under drawing resources we have sheet formats, borders, title blocks, and sketch symbols. Okay, sheet formats, we've got the basic format structures. Under borders, we've got our default border, which you're looking at. Under title blocks, we've got ANSI large, which is what you saw, and then we have ANSI A. Well, ANSI A, I can go ahead and insert, and you can see that that title block does not take up near as much real estate. And so it's designed for an A size sheet of paper, but providing the same uh, information that the large title block also had. And then sketch symbols, uh, there's no folders or information under that. I haven't put anything under any sketch symbols. So what types of information are actually in the default title blocks that, that we're dropping in? Well, as you can tell, what I've done here in the browser window is I've expanded the, the ANSI A title block. And under here, there's field text. And if we right mouse click and edit the field text, it'll give us a list of all the different text items that are being acquired. Some of the items are automatically filled in. Other items we'd have to fill in through different areas. For example, the author, that would be me, uh, that's the default author, check by, manufacturing approved by, engineering approved by, creation date is an automatic. Notice that it's gray, the text is gray and it's automatic, which means that it pulls it in uh, from the actual drawing sheet or the uh, drawing information. Title company, sheet size. So where do you fill these all in? Well, we unfortunately, we cannot edit these directly here. But what we can do is go through what is known as iProperties. And the iProperties tool will allow us to fill these items in. So iProperties, how do we get there? Well, you can either click the I Properties button under Edit Property Fields, or you can also get to I Properties by right mouse clicking under Drawing 3. But I Properties relates to all the sheets, which is kind of the drawback with using an I Property change, because everything you put in I Properties will apply to all the sheets that are in the system. So. Our subject is going to be a sample test drawing. And under I Properties, I just went to the summary page and we have a title. Um, and we can put a manager, we can put the company in. And when I hit apply, it should apply to our title block and close. And so I put in a company, put in our title that we had, but you can also see that it's now populated the edit property fields. So far so good. Huh. So what does this look like? What if we added another sheet? Well, let's find out.
So to add a sheet, I'm going to right mouse click on drawing, drawing 3, we'll choose new sheet, and we'll now have sheet 1 and sheet 2. Well, you're now looking at sheet 2 of 2, and it brings the, in the same information. Inventor 2013 brings in a title. Well, but doesn't each sheet typically have its own title? Hence the drawback of using the I properties. You can't customize for individual sheets. If I double click on sheet one in the browser window, you can see this is sheet one of two. Same thing. Now, could I edit this? or make a modification to it in sheet one? Well, not really, in the sense that it is part of the brought in text. Now, could I edit the actual text in here? Most definitely. But I cannot just change this text without uh, changing the I properties. So how can we customize our title block to make it work better for us? Well, if you want to use the default Autodesk title blocks, we can edit those. And it's going to get pretty confusing here because they've, they put in dimensions to keep the shapes consistent between ANSI large and ANSI A. So there's little equations and functions that are there. So let's take a look at that. So we're currently in sheet number one under ANSI A. I'm going to right mouse click and we're going to edit the definition. Well, when I edit the definition, what we're doing is we're editing the title block. And you can see that the title block has is, is been created. And you can see that there's a lot of dimensions, but there's also information. Like for example, the word drawn and then under it is author. But you can see the author is in brackets. And when an item is in brackets, that means that it is being pulled out of either I properties or another part of the drawing. Sheet number and number of sheets. Things like that. Sheet size. But notice that there's nothing in the scale area. Okay, there's no scale information. But the company name and the title are also brought in automatically. So how do we change or edit these items? Well, let's take a look at company because it is one of the ones that are easy to uh, to edit and there's no dimensions around it. So if I double click on company and that brings up the text editor here, you'll notice that it says company. But what you want to focus on is that the type comes from the drawing property and the property name is company. So the I properties that you're putting in based on the drawing is what will pop up. If we do the, the word title, the same thing should pop up. It comes from the drawing properties under title. However, we may want to make our own title for each drawing sheet. Makes sense. Well, one of the options that we have here is that we can look at other information or bring out other information that's available, including uh, right now it's properties model, property drawing, which is what our current one is. So the properties of the drawing are what uh, predicates it. We could bring in properties of the model and the name of the sheet when it was created as a part model could then be brought in as part of the title. That may or may not work based on drawing and naming recognitions. So a lot of times we'll just go to prompted entry and you can create your own prompted entry inputs. And so under prompted entry, I'm going to go ahead and delete title. What we want to do is put in the field. Oh, I was editing the field, and that's why it comes up as title. So this is title is now going to become a prompted entry item. If I was creating a new prompted entry, it would ask me for a question. We'll do that here in just a second. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's cancel this. We're going to right mouse click and delete the word title. All right. We're going to then put in a new text field. So we're going to choose text, create our window for the text, 
are typed is going to be prompted entry and you can see now it says enter prompt for field and so I'm going to put in drawing title and we can go all caps if we'd like since title blocks should be in all capital letters and we'll choose OK so now drawing title will appear here sounds pretty interesting Let's go ahead and finish our sketch of our title block. Do we want to save it as ANSI A? Now I can resave it over ANSI A or I can choose Save As. So I'm going to do a Save As and we're going to put in ANSI A ANSI A Title Prompt and we'll hit Save. Okay, so we're still on sheet one. Let's go ahead and delete ANSI A as we know it. And you'll notice that now under title blocks I've got ANSI A title prompt. So I'll right mouse click and insert it into my sheet. So notice that it now asks me for the drawing title. And we hit OK. And of course I hit the capital letter on that, but I can double click and edit that if I need to. I can edit anything that I type in. I can't edit anything that I didn't type. Notice that we have the pencil for editing. And so I can edit this by going up to field text and editing the field text. I can't edit author. Okay, that is brought in automatically. Creation date, company name is still the same. That was from my properties. But drawing title, which is the prompted entry, and I can have multiple prompted entries. I typically would create one for the title and one for the scale factor and drawing number. So those would be ty uh, typical prompted entries on the basic ANSI A title block. So what if you wanted to create your own title block? What if you really wanted to customize it and and work from there? Alright, let's go on to sheet 2 here and we've got again the basic title block that we started with from ANSI A. Let's go ahead and edit that ANSI A title block. This time we're going to be deleting some things and changing some things up. Like I mentioned, I always like to have the title uh, as a prompted entry. Company is fine. Uh, drawing checks are okay. Uh, typically what I'll do in this area is we'll put a logo in. And so instead of engineering approved, I'll delete out those information items um, and manufacturing approvals will delete out that. Now this particular square I can delete these lines or trim these lines up so we can go back and trim these. We'll bring this up to uh, let's see here we'll go up to the double line here and Let's go ahead and just select these and delete those. So now I've got an area that I can put a logo in. Instead of Q&A, I'll put in checked and we'll put in a prompted entry. Oops, excuse me, I've got checked already. Let's go ahead and put in um, revision and we'll put in a prompt and entry for the revision uh, number but I'm going to put an image in for this particular drawing. Okay to put an image in we're going to use the image insert tool 
and you can actually put an AutoCAD drawing or other information in. But I'm going to use the image insert tool. I'm going to create a window that the image is going to fit within in the box. And we're going to go ahead and put in guitar resized and choose open. So now I've put an image, could be a company logo, could be anything uh, within my title block. Let's go ahead and save. Oh, we're not there yet. We can save the finished sketch or in this case we're going to add some additional text. Revision. We're going to have to put a prompted text in here. And prompted entry. And enter for prompt is going to be revision no revision number. We'll go ahead and pan this over and do title and then scale. So text, title, prompted entry, drawing title, and for the scale, actually for the scale, I'm going to go ahead and delete this line. And that gives us a little bit bigger scale field for the scale to where it will fit a little bit better. And again, prompted entry. And if you delete out one of the brackets, you need to type that bracket back in. We'll choose OK. We'll hit Finish Sketch. We're going to save it. And we're going to say ANSI A. Custom Input. And we'll hit Save. All right. So now what we'll do is on sheet number two we'll delete out ANSI A and we'll insert custom input. It's going to ask us for a revision number, drawing title, and drawing scale is going to be 1 equals 1 and we'll choose OK. And now you can see that it brings in the logo, has all the information that we have, puts in a scale factor, still keeps the sheet information, the drawn by, the dates. Uh, if we had a revision, it would put the revision information in. Now, since I don't necessarily like the custom drawing right there and I may want it more centered, I can go back in, edit the title block, uh, and I can do the uh, title block editing right here just under the browser window I can edit that title block and make that change. So again I can create it from scratch because when I go into edit I can delete anything that I have already here or I can just create something brand new and the key is when you use image inserting make sure you get the right pixel size and uh, logo so they're not too stretched or too warped to fit in the space that you are looking for. But you can edit the title block any way that you choose uh, for your custom title block environment. Have a great day.